Welcome back, it's the Clay Golem. We are in Foundry VTT. We're looking at another add-on module today. Uh, in this one, we are looking at Forian's quest log. So there it is for you. Hopefully you can see that all right. Um, so this, in theory, is an extension to our journal that enables us to create quests, track quests, sign off quests, issue rewards for quests, and all things quest, which is potentially incredibly useful. Uh, I've been looking forward to covering this one for a while um, because in our Fandelva campaign etc there's quite a few little side quests and things that start to appear and as we head towards um, including the Ice Spire Peak which has got lots of side quests as well um, it's going to get a bit difficult for people to keep track of. Uh, my players generally they have paper and pen and they keep track of all of those things but wouldn't it be nice if there was a slightly easier way to do that and as the dm trust me i get confused as well so um that's it for in's quest log uh, let's start off by looking at some of the settings for this um and just what we potentially can customize so uh, at the top here it says allow player reward dragging so uh Check to allow players to drag rewards from the quest details window to their own actors. So, okay, in theory, they finish the quest, uh, the rewards are there, and they can then drag that to their own actor character sheets. Um, let's click that on for the moment. Players can create quests. Interesting. Uh, check to allow players to create quests. Player quests will appear in the available tab with player edit permissions. Requires create journal core permission i'm going to turn that on so we can have a play with it now i need to do that um create journal core permission first so let me save this where is that we want under uh is it user management under user management we can go to configure permissions now in here create journal entries by default um, game master can do it assistant gm and trusted players um, but not anybody else. So I think that is what it's referring to. We need to trust our players. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm going to turn that on. Um, obviously, you know, I am the player at the moment, so that's okay. Or at least for this testing purposes. So we've got that switched on. Good. Let's go back to uh, Florian's quest log. So in theory, that works now. Players can accept quests. Check to allow players to accept quests from available tab. Now, I guess, and I'm literally guessing, the way that would work is if you decide to put up a job board and there's a series of jobs, you're basically saying the players can go, we're going to do that one and that one and that one and pick their own quests from there, which will automatically activate them or make them... Um, accepted quests that they are now on rather than just being in the list um, or you may choose to not allow the players to do that and you do them manually yourself i'm going to click that on again just so we can see how it goes uh, allow trusted player quest editing so allow them to um, to have expanded quest editing and status control abilities i'm going to say no um count hidden objectives so if checked the number of completed total objectives will include hidden objectives so we can potentially oh i see so yeah if we've got let's say there's three things that need to happen in this quest chain we only show them the first one will it say oh there's one quest to do or will it say actually there's three quests to do even though you can only see one um I would keep those hidden. I don't want them to go, oh, look, it's a eight quest long, eight long quest ch chain. <laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> Surprise. Nope, it's not Friday. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave that off. I don't want them necessarily to know how many additional quests there are. And depending how the game goes, they may not get access to those other half of the quests, or maybe not until later, because um, I do like to keep. I like to keep certain things away from the characters until they get there in case I need to change my mind. Um, maybe they're not as tough as I thought they were. Maybe they're just not ready for it or they're not enjoying that kind of quest. Okay, every, game, every group is different, of course. So I'm going to leave that off. 
Uh, dynamic bookmark background. So if checked, the bookmark tab background is dynamically set to the window content background. Not really sure what that's trying to say. But let's leave it on. Uh, navigation style, bookmarks or classic tabs. Um, let's leave it as bookmarks. We might change it later and have a look. Show objectives in quest log. So decide if or how to show the amount of objectives next to the quest log. So there's no effect on the quest preview. So you can show objectives done, um, the done and total, or hide the objectives column. Let's leave done and total on, and we'll see what that means. Uh, default quest permission level sets the default permission level when new quests are created. Ah, right, okay, so can anybody see them? You know, uh, can only the owner see them, or is it nobody? So we're going to leave that as observer. Hide the quest log from players. Ah, right. So when enabled, this option hides the quest log from all players. Only the GM level can see. So if I want to use this myself in the background just to track what the heck they're doing, what conversations they've had and quests that they're on, I can do that and keep it as a tool just for me as the DM without them being able to see that. Um, to be honest, if I was going to do that, I would have a spreadsheet to one side um, and just have them in that and just use just use color coding you know yellow they're on it green they've completed it red they failed it that's it that's what I would do um, so I'm going I want to have that visible to the players especially to showcase it for you guys uh, show reward drop notifications check to see the UI notifications um, when quest rewards are dropped onto players sheet okay let's turn that on uh, show quest folder. Click to show the quest data folder in journals tab for debug purposes only. All right, we'll leave that off. Uh, quest tracker resizable. Check to allow manual resizing control of the quest tracker. Let's turn that on, I think. All right, that's him. That's the options. Um, so just a few things about there, mostly around visibility, which is absolutely fine. So where the heck is this? Right. Um, I don't know why I clicked over there, just to confuse you, because you're all looking over on the right side now, aren't you? Over on the left, if we go to our Journal Notes tab, we now have this little scroll icon, uh, which says Quest Log. If we click on here, we get a very journal-esque um, type of uh, pop-up. That, As you can see at the top, it says Quest Log. Uh, and we've got some tabs down the left. Available quests, in progress quests, completed quests, failed quests, and inactive ones. So that means you can obviously produce all of your quests and make them available as and when you want people to. And then when they accept them, they become in progress, and then either they will complete them or fail them. So they can look back, or at least the DM can, depending on your view permissions, um, you can look back and see what they are. So um, that's all very nice. Let's actually set up a quest, shall we? So I'm going to start on the inactive tab. Uh, this add quest is going to work no matter what. I just want to be on the inactive tab. So top right button here, we've got add quest. And this just brings up another little box here um, where we can write our quest in. I'm just going to make this bigger so the other the other box is hidden below. below. All right. So we've got some tabs here for details, GM notes, and manage quest. Let's start with the details. We can drop an actor or item or journal entry over there. So let's pick Rombar. We can drop, there we go, Rombar in there. Um, it tells us this is Rombar. Uh, the quest is inactive. And we've got it just called new quest. So we can edit this. Um, And we can call it pretty much anything we want. So Rombar needs some help. Let's call it that. Ridiculous. Uh, we can put in a description here. So Rombar got very drunk and has lost all his important tools. He wants you to help find them all. Just... Something ridiculous, all right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, good. We've got a description. Uh, we can save that. 
good. Uh, with the weak thing, we could, we've got different types of text and stuff we could put in here. We can insert things, put a table in. Um, when we insert, can we insert links? We can insert pictures, media, uh, emojis, uh, and special characters. Okay, so yeah, really good. We can insert lots of stuff there. Now, on the right of that, we've got this objectives thing, which is currently blank, but there is a plus thing here. So we can click that, and now we can add an objective. Um, find Rombar's hammer. There we go. We've now got an objective here. Um, we've got a box on the left here. It doesn't pop up to tell us what it means. What else have we got over here? So objective is hidden or show, so we can hide it or show it. Uh, we can edit it, which makes sense, and we can bin it. Now, I believe this is going to be the difference between whether they uh, have started it, completed it, um, it's in progress, etc. Not too sure, but we will get there. Okay, let's add another objective. Um, Find some painkillers for Rombard's headache. We can add that in. Let's add another objective in. Um, whatever. These are just silly. Okay. So explore the cellar, retrieve Rombard's burkit. <laughs> Just, just doing that to prove that we can edit it, right? Yeah, done on purpose. <laughs> Retrieve Rumbar's bucket of fish. These can be anything we like. Brilliant. Uh, now, at the bottom here, under there, we've got our rewards. Uh, it says we can drag and drop items. All right, let's find something from our items here. Um, here we go. You have some rations. That's some of your rewards. Um, Hew the battle axe. We can drop that in as a reward as well. Now, it's showing us... There's some buttons here about hide and show, unlock. What is custom? So custom. Um, ah, it literally is that. We can just add something in. We can type a line, a note of gratitude, and I can add that in there. So I don't necessarily need to go and create a completely new item for it. Although it'll be interesting to see what happens when we complete this quest and whether that is an item that we can drag into the character sheet or not. We'll find out. Okay, so we've got some options here. Um, again, to hide show. Um, lock. Reward is locked. And I guess that means that the players can't nick it. Um, reward is hidden. Uh, and we've got edit. So that was the one where we just wrote it. And obviously we can um, get rid of these as well. If I click show, it shows all of them. Okay, and if I unlock, it unlocks all of them. Okay, so why don't we unlock rations, leave the next one locked, um, and we will hide the last one. So the first one should be visible and unlocked, second one should be visible but locked, and the third one should be invisible and locked. Okay, just to see how it works. Okie dokie, so this is, remember this quest is still inactive. Uh, GM notes here. We can put anything we want to. And then we've got this manage quest. Configure permissions. Let's have a little look at this. Um, ah, this is where we can say for this quest, we potentially could have it only certain players can see a particular quest. So if they've got um, quests, individual player quests tied to their character's background, for example, um, that's how I can see this being useful. Uh, you could say, oh yes, well, uh, Haley has her own background quests or series of quests that she's undertaking and she could have a quest journal, long-term quests and things that only she can see. You can do that by the looks of it. That would be quite obvious. Um, but also we can uh, obviously set this particular quest whether it's observable or not. So let's configure permissions. Um, we can set an image here. Oh, okay, we're literally going to choose an image. That's fine. Um, let's choose an image from our items. Just, boom, there we go. Bloodstone. Simple as that. Just whatever. 
Uh, set as quest icon. Now, is Rombar that currently quest icon? We'll come back and have a look at that in a second. Okay, and we'll see where that appears. Add sub, uh, sub quest. Oh, please finish editing and close the current new quest before editing another. Right, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, does that mean I need to come out of this first? Okay, so let's close that. Uh, so we're now back in this main menu and we can see Ron Barn needs some help. This is this bit here. So just under added quest on the right hand side here where it's got zero slash zero. I think that is the bit where it says how many that they are on out of how many are available when it currently shows zero. Um, we can set this as an in progress quest. Uh, we can set this as an available quest or we can bin it. Right, if I just click on this, I can... Oh, look, there it is. Uh, if I can say, if I click on this, it then brings this back up so I can edit it if I wanted to. Um, so we've still got Rumbar over there. We've now got that image we put on over here. We've still from here have got the ability to set this as in progress or available, so we can do it from here as well. Now, under Manage Quest, where this said set the quest icon. Ah, okay. So look, just look in the just above this window where it says Rombar needs help. If I click this, it literally is changing that icon. If I want to do that, um, I mean, mostly I'm going to leave that as the NPC or or the the quest giver, if you like. Uh, but that's nice. You can do that. Add sub quest. Oh look, right, okay, literally brings up a whole new quest that we can, yeah, it's a sub-quest for Rombar needs some help. So you can nest your quests within quests if you want to, okay, that's fine. Um, rather than it being different objectives within there, you can actually have it as a total separate quest. Okay, good. Ooh, new, new quest. What's, ah, oh, right, okay, that's because I just went to the, let's get rid of that. <laughs> Bye. Um, that's because I just went and created sub quest, so it put a link in there. So that's interesting. It will link to the next quests in there. Therefore, you can create big quest chains. I quite like that, um, and they can be nested within each other. Um, hmm. I'm just thinking as so when you take somewhere like Fandolin, where one NPC might give out multiple quests, rather than having individual objectives, you could have this is the quest give up. And those are individual, if I, if I go back to manage quest, you can go, well, that's the individual who says, oh, I'm having problems with goblins. It's like, right, okay. And then they give you three or four sub quests within there that may themselves have multiple steps that you need to complete in order to help with the goblin problem. Um, you know, oh, we'll go and find out what's happening over here. Go and explore the goblin camp. Find the goblin leader and bring me their head whatever it might be and they may not be those steps through they can do them in any order you know what i mean i'm sure you do all right so before we do anything else uh, i'm just going to on the other screen i'm going to bring over uh, our player version of this so let's have a look what the players can see yes we're back in here of course um, we've got rombar um, and i've got Haley. so um, game is paused of course can Haley see quest stuff so under her journal notes, she can indeed see the quest log. If we open that up, at the moment, there's no quests available, none in progress, none are completed and none have failed. That is what I would expect to see. OK, back over here. Just unpause the game, make sure that it doesn't give us any wibbly things. I can go to here and say this quest is now available. So it's disappeared off inactive, as you would expect. And if I go to available, it says Rombar needs some help. So now how does that look to our players? So back over here, um, open up our quest again just by clicking on that one on the left. And of course, we can put that down as a macro if we wanted to. I can drag that down there, I think. Whatever. Maybe I can't. I just assumed I could. <laughs> Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, failed, completed, in progress, available. Oh, look, Rombar needs some help. So again... You could make this visible when they visit the town hall and they go, oh, there's a quest board. And they go and look at it and go, oh, OK, there's only one thing pinned on here. Remember, this is Haley. What can she read? She can open this and say, oh, Rombar, his quest is available. 
Uh, he got very drunk and has lost all his important tools. He wants help to find them. Now remember, we made the rations visible and the, um, the hue, the battle axe visible. One is locked and one is unlocked. Now, if I'm hovering over rations, it looks like immediately I can steal them. Let's uh, yoink. Let's see if we can. It's not like Haley at all. Haley can indeed steal the quest stuff. She can't give it back. That's fine. That's what we want to know. So if it's, we can't do it with you. Yeah, can't do it with you at all. So if it's locked, they can't take them. So obviously, Haley's cheated and she's taken the uh, some of the rewards for the quest without actually doing them. Okay, that's what we need to know. So Haley's going to have this conversation with Rombar, or he's going to take down that notice, um, and he's going to go find Rombar and say, "Oh, I saw that you need some help, um, you know, finding some stuff." But at the moment, Haley can't do anything with this set as in progress. Haley can set this as in progress, but she doesn't know what any of the steps are. I see. Yeah, so she can toggle whether it's available or not. Okay, that's fine. We're learning. That's why we're doing this, obviously. <laughs> if any of you are using this already, you're kind of going blimey. You're going really long way around. That's absolutely fine. So, if this is, so they've, so what we got. Ah, I see what we've got here is I've got these objectives hidden at the moment, so Haley couldn't see them. Let me put this rations back in here as a reward. Um, I'm going to keep. The note of gratitude hidden, but they should be able to see the others. And I can drag these items around if I want to as well, which is fine. Good. All right. Uh, now, of course, what... Sorry, slight segue in my brain. Apologies. With the subset, this would show that the reward is going... It would. You would assume as a player... If you can see all these rewards, so you can see rations and hew the battle axe plus one, you would assume whatever objectives you can see, that's the reward you would get. Now, if you want different sets of rewards for different bits, you can, of course, keep the bits hidden until, oh, you found Rombar's hammer, you get the rations. Oh, you found some painkillers, you get the battle axe. Oh, you found his bucket of fish, you get the note of gratitude. So you could do it like that. Or... That's where, over here, the sub-quests could come in. So again, I'm going to mess it up, but you can put separate rewards in here. So you could say, oh, I need help, and here are my three sub-quests and the rewards that go with those, and they could choose to do some or all or none of them. Um, and there we go, we've got this new quest up here that I'm going to get rid of. So at the moment, Haley couldn't see any of these, so if I make these top two visible... Um, and we've said that this is an active quest. Let's pop back again and see how that looks for our friend Haley over here. Uh, yes, she can see these. Okay, so she can now see these quests. Oh, let me close this. Okay, so this is available quest and it shows zero objectives out of two. We know there's three objectives, but I only showed that there were two. And if you remember, that was one of the things in the options that we could say, do we show even the hidden ones or not? Nothing in progress. All right, Haley says, I'm gonna do this. I set that in progress. Now on her progress one, she can see this and she can see that she's got a quest to find Rombar's hammer and some painkillers. And at the moment, she's gonna get some rations. That's it. Right, good. Let's step through. Um, let's reveal that she's going to get these other things as well. And we can also reveal that there's a bucket of fish to be done. Right, so again, back to Haley, just to show that that now has revealed those extra bits, the extra step that needs to be done and the extra bits. That's good. That's what we want. Uh, and this is now in progress. Okay, so... It's not available. In progress is this quest. And we can see that zero out of three have been done. This is the DM screen. Again, I know I'm flicking backwards and forwards between the two, but I think it's really important that we can see the, the we can see the player's um, view of what we're doing here. Okay, so there's some things I've got here. Set the whole quest as completed. Set the whole quest as failed. Uh, set the quest as inactive. 
um, or set it as available. So they might decide to, oh, actually, Rombar, I know we said we were going to do that, but we haven't got time right now. We'll come back later. We could choose to set it back. Rather than saying it's failed, um, we could choose to set it as inactive, and then they can come back and, oh, yeah, Rombar, sorry, we've been away for a week, but now we're back. Do you still need help with those goblins? Yes, you do. Great. Off we go. Okay, so that's the way that works. Well, I'm, I'm making that assumption. Logically, that's how it would work. All right, so they're off on their quest and they're doing this and they find Rombard's hammer. What happens if I click this once? This shows me a tick here, which would suggest that they have completed this step of the quest. But what does that mean? I think that means they failed it. So nothing completed it, failed that element. Okay, so let's say they found Rombar's hammer and they found some painkillers. Again, let's pop back and see what Haley's view of this is. Um, that's now being ticked off. Now, the players are not ticking those off as completed. The DM is ticking those off to saying, oh, yeah, you did that. Now, as a DM, you've got a couple of options here, depending how it's set up. You can continually update that as they tick things off, or you might do that at the end of the session and go through and go, right, of all the objectives they've got, which ones did they complete? Tick, 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 tick. Then on your next session, the players can come in and go, right, what were we doing? Oh, right, yeah, let's check the quest log. Oh, yeah, rem oh, yeah I remember, yeah, we found his hammer and then we were found some painkillers. We were about to go into the cellar and look for this stupid bucket of fish. Brilliant, okay? That might be a good way of using it. it. Depends how long your game sessions are. If you have game sessions that are four or five hours long, you might find that leaving updates of quest journals to the end, it might be that might be too much. If you've got shorter ones, you go, well, I'm not going to waste time doing that admin. We've only got an hour to play or two hours to play. Then uh, we'll do that as we go. All right, so does anything special happen if we tick the final one? The answer I can tell you is no. All it does is show on the player's one that they've all been completed. Um, now, obviously, it's still saying in progress. If, as the DM, I say, well, actually, you've completed all those and tick this. What now happens again? Back over here. Let's close this for a second. It's not available. It's not in progress. It's moved to completed quests. It shows three out of three. And if we open this up, it will show us these things. And I'm going to say to the gym, hey, we've completed this quest, but I can't. <laughs> but give me my stuff. <laughs> I can't access it. So again, the DM is going to have to go, oh, hang on a minute. And nicely, they can just unlock the whole lot. Oh, right. You can now have all of the quest rewards. Or I can, uh, I can unhide all of the quest rewards because they didn't know what they were going to get. So I kept some hidden. Now, it might be that they kept um, that hidden. Uh, so actually, they're going, oh, we're going to get some rations and a note of gratitude. Whoopie doo. But actually, he's so happy when they've completed it that this extra thing suddenly appears in there. And now they can take those bits. So you could have some, you know, he might say, oh, the quest is go into the cellar. Um, and I go into the cellar where my very angry pet wolf is there and retrieve my teddy bear, but don't hurt the wolf. And they come back and go, here's your teddy bear. Tick, you've completed that quest element. Did you hurt the wolf? Yes, we did. Well, you're only getting the standard rewards. No, you didn't. Therefore, actually, suddenly, oh, brilliant. I'm going to give you this extra thing as well. That's a really silly example, but can you see what I mean? Is it, rather than it just being black and white you did it or you didn't it might be you did it and fulfilled all of the criteria or you did it or rather you yeah you did it and didn't do some of that other criteria you know you you know what i mean <laughs> i'm sure you do know what i mean and of course we could have one of the objectives in here as like yes go into the cellar and retrieve rumbar's bucket of fish and then we might have another objective which might be um, don't in, injure his cat uh, or whatever, something silly. Um, and we might have that as one of the quest objectives. And actually, the cat attacks them um, while they're trying to retrieve the fish. And you go, actually, you failed that one. And on Haley's screen, looking at that, you can see, yes, we did that. Yes, we did that. Yes, we did that. Uh oh, we didn't do that. So that might be where, no, you're not getting that. 
battle axe because of that. I think this is pretty awesome. Now, bearing in mind, again, we've just looked at one example of one type of quest that we could do with this. Um, we haven't done the nested quests, although that looks quite straightforward because it's all just using this. Um, and we're just going to add subquests in there if we want them. This looks really, really quite good. Easy is probably the word I would want to use. Oh, look, that's updated to say now there's three out of four objectives because don't injure the cat with a fourth objective. Now, was there any of those settings that we wanted to look at and just change to see how that affects it? Um, show the quest folder, reward drop notifications. I didn't try that. Um, we'll try that in a second. Default permission was observer. We saw that. We I want that, even if you don't. Um, this is the show objectives done total, which was that three out of four. Um, yep, I'm going to check this uh, drop reward notifications. Sorry, show reward drop notifications. Check to see UI notifications when quest rewards are dropped onto player sheets. So in theory, that's going to drop something in chat. Let's... Uh, Position, I don't want to do that. Hang on. Let's position Haley's one here. So this on the right hand side, extreme right, is the DM um, chat. Um, but let's open Haley. That's such a horrible thing to say. <laughs> uh, and then let's see what happens if we take our quest rewards. Thank you very much. Oh, I can't take that. Oh, I can't take that one. Okay, so that note of gratitude, because it's not an item, it's literally just words, understandably, we can't take that across. Now, it did say about, in the help uh, we were looking at, it said about, I thought it was going to drop a message in here, basically say, Haley's stolen all of the rewards. <laughs> this one here, show reward drop notifications. So I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be doing, but hasn't appeared to work for us but that's fine it's probably my misunderstanding one of you geniuses is bound to be already writing in the comment right now uh, what that actually does because it doesn't do what i thought it was going to do um, or maybe it's a bug or something so i i think this is really really nice i like it it's simple it's straightforward i think for players it helps them organize their game and just keep all, everything together so they know what's going on Am I going to use this one? Yes, I am. So I'm in the test world at the moment, but I will be putting this into our Fandelver Stormwreck Isle campaign thing um, and be implementing those quests from those modules in there. So if you want to see this kind of in action and me setting this up with real quests and stuff, uh, keep watching those videos. There will be a video where I go back through Stormwreck Isle and just create these quests in there and then through Fandelver and create those quests as well. I think the really good thing that also this does is it forces you to think about your quest hooks um, and the way that you describe quests to players to make it a bit more interesting rather than going, oh yeah, a bloke over there says, can you find my cat? And that's and like, really? And a lot of the time players going to go, well, we're playing D&D &D and it's about doing quests, so let's go and do it rather than the characters feeling compelled to help this poor chap find a cat. I think you know what I mean. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, well, there's a cave. Well, playing D&D, &D, of course we're going to go into the cave because that's what D&D &D is about. Um, where normally those characters would be going, there's no point in going into the cave. You know, what are we going to find in there, apart from, you know, potentially a very angry bear or something? <laughs> I think you know what I'm getting at. All right. I'm going to stop babbling. I'm going to leave you with this one. Um, yeah, um, leave a like. That would be great, please. And drop in the comments whether you already use this or whether you think this would be something useful for you. Uh, for me, it's a win. See you in the next one, guys. You take care.